we are going to talk about the Texas six-week abortion ban. It's pretty cringe. That's that's the basic summary of the whole situation. If you don't have a lot of time, Texas six-week abortion ban? Cringe. Not based. We don't like this. This is bad. We're going to read this uh, synopsis of it. By a 5-4 to four vote, the Supreme Court just allowed Texas to enforce a law that prohibits abortions after six weeks with no exception for rape or incest. So um, if you get raped or incest, um, you are out of luck, uh, get fucked, and that sucks. It's real bad. I am so sorry. Like, this is... Roe v. Wade is functionally overturned. Justice Sotomayor all but says it. So, you know, here we go. The court's order is stunning, presented with an application to enjoin a flagrantly unconstitutional law engineered to prohibit women from exercising their constitutional rights and evade judicial scrutiny. Scrutiny. A major of justices have opted to bury their heads in the sand. Last night, the court silently acquised in state states enactment of a law that flouts nearly 50 states over federal precedents. Today, the court blatantly explains that it declined to grant relief because of procedural complexities of the state's own invention. Because the court's failure to act rewards tactics designed to avoid judicial review and inflict significant harm on the applicants and on women seeking abortions in Texas, I dissent. Okay. The act is a breathtaking act of defiance. The court should not be content to ignore its constitutional obligations to protect not only the rights of women, but also the sanctity of its precedents and of the rule of law. Make no mistake, Brett Kavanaugh and Amy Coney, Amy Coney Barrett are responsible for ending Roe v. Wade. Chief Justice John Roberts explicitly announced that he would block Texas law. Kavanaugh and Barrett cast the decisive votes, allowing for the six-week abortion ban to take effect. What's essentially going to happen is that a lot of people are going to opt for the black market for abortion procedures because this is unreasonable. I was doing a little bit of research. According to Planned Parenthood, it takes about two to three weeks after sex for pregnancy to happen. So, you know, there's already half of your half of your time. You have six weeks, right? You have six weeks. And three of those weeks, you like up to three worst case scenario. We're going to we're going to talk about this in terms of the worst case scenario. Three of those weeks, it's like not possible for you to even know that you're pregnant. OK, so then so so pregnancy happens two to three weeks and then some people notice the pregnancy as early as a week after the pregnancy begins. So the pregnancy begins two to three weeks. So it starts two to three weeks, and then you notice it a week after that. So, you know, fourth week, you have noticed pregnancy. You know, worst case scenario, you you notice on the fourth week. You have two weeks to get the abortion, right? So I I looked at some more information, There is time to appointment and delays in accessing care among U.S. abortion patients. And when the edited version of this video comes out, I'll leave links to all of these things. But this is the most recent data that I was able to find. In this analysis of individuals obtaining abortions in 2014, some 76% of patients were able to obtain an abortion within seven days of calling to make an appointment. The average time to appointment was 7.6 days. You know, we'll just keep it at a week. So that's another week. You get the, you can actually get the procedure a week later. So that leaves you with only one week to, to, to actually figure out if you get an abortion. And then there's the counseling and waiting periods for abortion. 
And there's a bunch of information on this, but if we're going to look at Texas specifically, they require a 24 hour waiting period before you can actually proceed. Worst case scenario, you have less than a week to actually get the abortion before it is considered illegal, according to this data here. That's not good. That makes abortion extremely inaccessible. You know, th- this is this is just not good. That's and, and, and the black market for abortions is going to go up, like I said. And the other thing that I wanted to mention when talking about this is that this is a conversation that trans people are pretty much always excluded from. This is like only cis people are ever brought up in this conversation. We talk about women's rights, but it's like trans men can get pregnant too and trans men can have kids and have abortions. I don't know. That That's always forgotten about. Put it above me. That says women's lives. This is always about women. It's always about cis women when it comes to abortion. And I think that we kind of need to change our language to just be more inclusive. Just like people can get abortions. This is a people's, this is a people's rights issue. I don't know. That's just my take on it. It's really unfortunate that this is happening. And if this spreads to more states, that's just going to be really bad. It's bad enough that we have it have this in Texas, but it could spread to more states. Yeah, I mean, I, I guess local elections are important. And just whenever you can vote on this, vote to make sure that, like, we can have abortions because this is a big this is a big human rights issue. Check this out. So there's this graph I found. I'm going to move over. We have. So here here is the. um, Here's the Texas. You can see that right there. Texas. September 1st. And then spread up upstate November 1st and then the rest of these areas it seems to have been blocked so um you know that's that's about it for that one just a just a quick little if you didn't know now you know educational